guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part two of lesson 7.3. Two objectives for this video. We're going to solve non-square systems of linear equations, and we're going to use systems of equations to model and solve real life problems. A non-square system is a system where the number of equations does not match up with the number of variables. So you can see in here we've got three variables but only two equations. We're still going to work towards that row echelon form. So top equation, we're going to keep the same x minus 2y plus z equals 2. We are going to have to do a little bit of work with our second equation. We need to get rid of those two x's. So I'm going to take top equation times negative 2. So we get negative 2x plus 4y minus 2z equals negative 4. Adding those up, those x's cancel out. We get 3y minus 3z equals negative 3. And then we need a 1 on our y, so I'm going to divide everything by 3. So then we get the equation y minus z equals negative 1. Now normally we would have a third equation which would help us figure out what our z value is. But since we don't have any restrictions on our z value, z can be any number. So we're going to use this z equals a thing. And then we'll do our back substitution. We'll plug that a value in. So we get y minus a equals negative 1. So we get y equals a minus 1. Then we need to take those values and plug them into our top equation to get our x value. So x minus 2 times a minus 1 plus a equals 2. Now we'll have to distribute this negative 2 through our parentheses. So x minus 2a plus 2 plus a equals 2. If we combine like terms, negative 2a and a gives us x minus a plus 2 equals 2. Subtracting 2 from both sides, we get x minus a equals 0, so x equals a. Writing this out as our ordered triple, our x value is a, our y value was a minus 1, and our z value was a. So here's our solution to this non-square system. Next example is an application problem. So we've got the height of an object at a time of t seconds moving in a vertical line given to us by this equation x equals 1 half a times t squared plus v sub 0 times t plus s sub 0. That s value in the equation is our height and that's going to be measured in feet. A stands for acceleration and we measure that in feet per second squared. T is our time and I mentioned that we're measuring that in seconds earlier. In our equation, that v sub zero value is going to represent the initial velocity at a time of zero seconds, and that s sub zero represents the initial height of our object. What we're gonna do is set up a system of equations based on some given information down below, and we're gonna figure out those missing a, v sub zero, and s sub zero values. So our first bit of information says that our height s is 52 feet at a time of one second. We've also got an s value of 52 feet at a time of two seconds, and we've got an s value of 20 feet at a time of three seconds. So we're gonna use that information to help us out, and then we'll see if we can interpret those results at the end. So first thing I'm doing is plugging in this first set of information. So we've got 52 equals one half, a times 1 squared plus our v sub 0 times 1 plus that s sub 0 value. Now if we simplify this down a little bit, 1 squared is 1 and 1 times a half is a half. So this says 52 equals 1 half a plus, well 1 times v sub 0 is still v sub 0 plus s sub 0. So as we start setting up our system, this is going to be our first equation in that system. If we look at that second bit of information, we'll set it up as 52 equals 1 half times a times 2 squared plus v sub 0 times 2 plus s sub 0. And cleaning this one up a little bit, 2 squared is 4, 4 times a half, we end up with 52 equals 2a plus 2 times v sub 0 plus s sub 0. So this will be our second equation in our system. And then we'll have to use that last piece of information. So 20 equals 1 half times a times 3 squared plus v sub 0 times 3 plus our s sub 0 value. So 3 squared is 9. 9 times a half is 9 halves. 
a. So we got 20 equals 9 halves a plus 3v sub 0 plus s sub 0. And this will be the third equation in our system. As far as setting up this system in row echelon form, I don't see any of our equations where we've got a leading coefficient of 1. So what I'm going to do is grab this top equation and multiply everything by 2. So if we take a half a times 2, we get just plain a plus 2 times v sub 0 plus 2 times s sub 0. And then if we take 52 times 2, we get 104. And notice I did flip the order on this equation just so we could have our equals information on the very end. Now our second equation can't have any a's in it, so we'll have to get rid of that. So I'm going to work with this 2a equation. So 2a plus 2v sub 0 plus s sub 0 equals 52. And what I'm going to do is take this new equation that we got right here and multiply it by negative 2. So then we get negative 2a minus 4v sub 0 minus 4s sub 0 equals negative 208. Then if we add these together, those a's cancel out. We get negative 2v sub 0 minus 3s sub 0 equals negative 156. Now we want to have a 1 in front of this v sub 0, so I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So we get v sub 0 plus 3 halves s sub 0 equals 78. Then lastly, we need to work with this green equation up here. I'm going to make one change to it right now. I don't like looking at that fraction on our a, so I'm going to multiply everything by 2 before we start working with it. So then we get 9a plus 6v sub 0 plus 2s sub 0 equals 40. Again, just multiplying everything by 2. Then we need to get rid of those 9a's. So I'm going to take this red equation right here and multiply everything by negative 9. So we get negative 9a minus 18v sub 0 minus 18s sub 0 equals negative 936. Then if we add those equations together, those a's cancel out, we get negative 12v sub 0 minus 16s sub 0 equals negative 896. Now we need to get rid of those negative 12 v sub zeros. So I'm going to take this blue equation right here and multiply it by 12. So then we get 12 v sub 0 plus 18 s sub 0 equals 936. And adding those up, those v sub zeros cancel out. We get 2 s sub 0 equals 40. And divide both sides by 2 we end up with s sub 0 equals 20. And then we can back substitute to find our missing values. So plug the 20 into the equation right above it. We get v sub 0 plus 3 halves times 20 equals 78. Taking 3 halves times 20, we get v sub 0 plus 30 equals 78. So subtracting the 30, we get v sub 0 equals 48. Then last thing we need to do is figure out our a value. So we're going to plug in our v sub 0 and our s sub 0 to that top red equation. So a plus 2 times 48 plus 2 times 20 equals 104. Simplifying this down, a plus 96 plus 40 equals 104. Well, 96 plus 40 is 136, so A plus 136 equals 104. Subtract the 136 over to the right-hand side. We get an A value of negative 32. So our acceleration A value is negative 32 feet per second squared. Our initial velocity at a time of zero is 48 feet per second. And our starting height S sub zero was 20 feet. Next example, we've got a quadratic, so y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We know that our graph goes through the points negative 1, 3, 1, 1, and 2, 6. We want to figure out what those a, b, and c values are for our quadratic equation. So let's start with this first ordered pair and plugging the information in. So 3 equals a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. 
if we rearrange and simplify this down, well, negative one squared is one, one times a is a, negative one times b is minus b, and then plus c equals three. So this will be our first equation in the system. Then we've also got this one, one ordered pair. So one equals a times one squared plus b times one plus c. Again, simplifying and rearranging, one squared is one, one times a is a, plus, well, one times b is just b, plus c equals one. And then lastly, we've got this two six ordered pair. So six equals a times two squared plus b times two plus c. So two squared is four, so we've got four a plus two b plus c equals six. So here are the three equations that we're gonna use in our system. For row echelon form, we need our top equation. Do we have a leading coefficient of one on the a? So I'm gonna start with this blue equation. We'll just go a minus b plus c equals three. Let's work with this red equation to start building our second piece of the system. So we've got a plus b plus c equals one. We'll need to get rid of that a, so I'm gonna take this top equation times negative one, so then we get negative a plus b minus c equals negative three. Then adding those together, those a's cancel out. We've got two b, those c's cancel out, equals negative two. And we need a one on this b, so if we divide both sides by two, we get the equation b equals negative one. Lastly, we'll work with this green equation, so four a plus two b plus c equals six, and we need to get rid of the a's and then the b's. So I'm gonna take this blue equation up here on the top left, and we'll multiply that by negative four. So we get negative four a plus four b minus four c equals negative 12. A's cancel out, we've got six B minus three C equals negative six. Then in order to get rid of these B's, I'm gonna use this new purple equation right here where it says B equals negative one, and we're gonna multiply that by negative six. So we get negative six B equals six. Adding those together, we get negative three C equals zero, and dividing both sides by three, we get C equals zero. We've only got one missing value, I guess, and that's our a value, so we'll plug b and c into that top equation. So a minus negative one plus zero equals three. So a plus one equals three. Subtracting the one over, we get a equals two. So if we were to write out this entire equation now, it would say y equals, well our a value is two times x squared minus one x plus zero on the end for our c value. One more application type problem, and I'm gonna start setting up my system as I read through this. So it says we've got an inheritance of $12,000, and it was split between three investment funds. So I'm gonna give those investment funds names. I'm gonna call the first one X, I'm gonna call the second one Y, and I'm gonna call the third one Z. So when we total up that amount, when we add those things together, that's our $12,000. We've got a money market fund that pays 5%, so maybe that's our X. So as far as 5% goes, we would take 0 0.05 times our X, plus we've got municipal bonds that pay 6%, so maybe that's our Y, so we'll go 0 0.06 Y, plus our mutual funds pay 12%, so plus 0.12 Z equals and if we look, it says our total interest was $1,120. So there is our second equation in the system. Last piece says the amount invested in the mutual funds is $4,000 more than the amount invested in the municipal bonds. So the mutual funds was our Z value. So the Z value is $4,000 more than our municipal bonds value, which we represented with that Y. So here are the three equations that we're gonna work with. As far as row echelon form, that first one looks pretty good. We've got a leading coefficient on the X. So X plus Y plus Z equals 12,000. For our next equation, I'm actually gonna focus on this last one. I do wanna subtract that Y over, so then it would say negative Y plus z equals 4,000, but we don't want a negative one in front of our y, so we're gonna divide everything by negative one. So then our second equation says y minus z equals negative 4,000. 
with that last equation, I don't like dealing with all of these decimals, so I'm gonna multiply everything by 100 before we make any other changes to it. So then that equation says 5x plus 6y plus 12z equals 112,000. Now we need to get rid of those 5x's, so I'm gonna take this top equation in our system and multiply it by negative five. So then we get negative 5x minus 5y minus 5z equals negative 60,000. Now if we add these equations together, x's cancel out, we get y plus 7z equals 52,000. We need to get rid of that y, so I'm gonna use this new second equation right here, y minus z equals negative 4,000, but I want to multiply it by negative one, so we get negative y plus z equals 4,000. Adding those up, those y's cancel out, we get 8z equals 56,000, but we don't want 8z, we wanna have just a regular z, so we're gonna divide both sides by eight, and we get z equals 7,000. Now if we plug that into our system up here, z equals 7,000, we can back substitute to find our missing values. So if we plug 7,000 in for that z value right above, we get y minus 7,000 equals negative 4,000. Adding 7,000 over to the right hand side, we get y equals 3,000. And then plugging those things into the top, the y and the z, we get x plus 3,000 plus 7,000 equals 12,000. Now 3,000 and 7,000 is 10,000. If we subtract that over, we get x equals 2,000. Our x value of 2,000 meant we had $2,000 in that money market fund. Our y value of 3,000 meant we had $3,000 in our municipal bonds. And our z value of 7,000 meant we had $7,000 in those mutual funds. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.